a warm welcome to our uh, speaker today tv venkat raman uh, we'll call him venkat as we address him uh, always some audit is very pleased to bring this chief auditor series and under the chief auditor series we are uh, talking to having a conversation and having presentations from chief chief audit executives cfos ceos administrators educators regulators everybody who's involved with internal audit so uh, that's that's the uh, theme so that we can talk to all the people who have made this journey uh, who are part of the internet fraternity and who are willing to speak so that students and the professional internet fraternity can learn from their experiences what they have gone through and how they are handling the internet function so uh, this is the fourth session uh, that we are holding and fifth session in fact which we are, which we are holding and a fifth episode of chief auditor series and we are very happy to have a uh, tvv with us the venkat with us and before i formally introduce uh, satish could yeah i i'm i'm very happy to have this conversation with tvv as i i call him my my friendship with him or my professional friendship with him dates back many many years when we then we used to stay together in thane and uh, so he is an amazing gentleman uh, a great auditor and he brings to bear a lot of experience so not necessarily he'll talk about his present uh, role but a lot of experience which he'll bring to bear in this conversation we are all waiting to hear from you so dipj maybe you can formally invite uh, to introduce him and then we can get on with the session absolutely so i I'll, i'll take this opportunity to formally introduce him uh, so that all the viewers can then you know uh, be knowing more about him so he he is a commerce graduate and a uh, merit certificate holder uh, he associate member of the institute of cost and works accountant he is a cisa a certified information systems auditor and certified internal auditor uh, he brings over two decades of experience spanning manufacturing and service sectors across diverse geographies in governance risk management and compliance he has recently transitioned to ani technologies private limited i think to all of us it's known as ola okay. i think that's 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 the buzzword you know a wonderful company and a great company you know uh, with a great chief audit executive now so as the group head internal audit and risk assurance prior to joining ola in november 21 he led the internal audit and risk management function at ashok leland and its group entities he also had a stint with flipkart aditya birla group uh, deloitte jindal iron and steel company limited and under his leadership there are there there is few things which i would like to read out you know uh, so that you can know more about venkat under his leadership ashok leland back the icc ic ici lombard cnbc tv 18 india risk management award in the category best risk management framework and systems automotive in january 2018 and again in january 2020 and of course the coveted golden peacock award for risk management in the category automotive for the years 2018 and 2019 from the institute of directors india and during its stint with aditya birla group he received the group chairman award for functional excellence from shri kumar mangalam birla post which he underwent an executive ed- education program on leadership at kellogg school of management us he is passionate about advocacy of the internet and risk management profession and currently contributes to the profession as a faculty for risk management for institute of directors governing council member of the rm next forum of risk management professionals he is also been invited by leading corporates to provide an awareness and understanding of erm for their leadership outside of work i think what is more important you know for a human being for a professional is peter drucker always talked about that other than your main core work you should be having some other interests where you will develop as a better professional so outside of work venkat has interests in reading speaking at professional body forums nature photography and carnatic classical music very important and i think because of all this venkat has also agreed to speak to all of us uh, venkat i'll call you venkat so you know uh, over to you venkat to make a presentation uh, to speak to the internet fraternity so that we all learn from you uh, thank you deep ji and satish for a very warm introduction and uh, you know really it's been a pleasure uh, uh, to be part of this uh, august forum uh and uh, you know uh, as they say one gathers pebbles during the walk in the in, in the sands near the ocean and so i am only a pebble gatherer and uh, as you uh, can see you know we gain we enrich ourselves by sharing the knowledge 
and also learning from others. So I'm hoping to actually spend some time watching the other parts of the CAE series and uh, enriching myself. And I do know that you already have something around the data analytics space, which is a wonderful initiative. So compliments to you and your team, Deepji, and I think uh, please do keep up the good work. Thank you. What I will do in the next uh, 15, 20 minutes uh, as we will structure this is uh, give a quick overview in terms of, uh, you know, what I bring uh, to the table or rather, you know, what I have learned over a period of time, not necessarily that it is, uh, 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 you know, gospel as such, or it is not the Bible for in internal auditors, but something which I thought will be useful for internal auditors to uh, look at and, uh, you know, in the process, see how they can better what has already been done. So this uh, uh, experience sharing will be largely drawn from my exposure at Ashok Leyland, uh, and also what uh, I have been trying to do in uh, Ola. And of course, certain parts of it are also drawn from my experience in Aditya Birla Group, but there has been no reference to any of the companies here. Uh, let me start by sharing the presentation. So give me a minute to share the presentation. Please. Yeah, I hope it is uh, visible to all. Yes, uh, yes, please. Yes, yes. yes. So uh, once again, I reiterate that uh, this is uh, purely my views and it does not necessarily reflect the views of my present or the past employer or that of any professional body. Although there have been some references to either my past employer or uh, the Institute of Internal Auditors uh, as the case may be, so that you know there's a context to what is being spoken about. So the presentation thread, as I have tried to do, is uh, largely map out the PPT, which I would like to call as people, process, and technology part of uh, the internal audit domain. And of course, prior to that, I have two or three slides in terms of setting the context. Without much ado, let me just move on to what I have to do. And I'll probably skip a few slides because you know it's largely to give a context. So definition of internal audit, I don't want to read it out. It is well known uh, that we are an independent and objective assurance and consulting function. And the primary role is to improve the risk management control and governance processes of an organization by evaluating it in an independent and objective way. Now, how do we go about that? Uh, you know, if uh, our primary role is to uh, help the board and the executive management to protect the assets, reputation and sustainability of the organization, as you know, today, the, the larger uh, impetus of most companies is to drive a sustainability agenda. And it is now the new buzzword as it's not no longer new is ESG, which is environmental, social and uh, governance. However, if, let me spend more time in terms of the fact that, uh, you know, the mission of any internal audit function should be to protect organizational value, the core being how do we protect organizational value and this, how does it derive itself from uh, risk-based and objective assurance and advice and probably even insights as we uh, do the work. There are certain core tenets or principles for the professional practice of internal audit, which to my mind, as uh, this is largely carved out from the IAA publication, but to my mind, there are four or five things which stand out, which is fundamentally what I would look for in any, any uh, internal auditor is how do we communicate effectively to impel action? Because the proof of whatever we do is in the pudding, which is the internal audit report, right? An internal audit report will be only effective if it impels action. Otherwise, it is just, uh, you know, a ream of paper. Uh, or you know a, a electronic uh, uh, garbage but how do we uh, communicate both written and oral this is to me uh, to me a very sacrosanct uh, uh, principle to be lived by and of course alongside all of that is an internal audit to be effective will have to align the functional domain with the strategies objectives and risks of the organization i mean if you don't know your business you can't be an effective internal auditor if you don't know the risk that encompass the business you are definitely not adding value and last but not the least is, you know, given the fact that uh, we have to be proactive and future focused, there is no point looking at historical data and uh, living with, uh, you know, uh, postmortem based uh, analysis. We have to, you know, transform ourselves into future oriented and uh, looking at what lies ahead based on the work that we do. And we will talk about that in the subsequent slides. Now, I want to spend a few things with that I'm extremely passionate about, uh, the people in the internal audit function. 
I think over a period of time, you know, uh, as I've realized, and thanks largely to Aditya Birla Group, where I, uh, uh, I had a wonderful set of people to work with and leaders to work with, I realized one thing. The more you engage with the people, uh, whether it is within the team or even outside, uh, in, a, in a, uh, either an informal setup or even outside of work, and uh, making sure that you know the people uh, understand the culture the values of the organization making sure that the people are respected i think these go a long way in building the trust and building the right sort of organizational stickiness for uh, uh, you know any organization but even within the internal audit function how do we build internal audit leaders and that's what i want to talk about right so development of the competency framework across roles is a good starting point because you know unless the internal auditors across the roles understand what they are supposed to do and you know the iia has uh, brought out a cboc publication which talks about the competencies for internal auditors across roles both behavioral and technical and i think it will be worthwhile for uh, aspiring internal auditors or even future uh, chief audit executives to have a look at the publication it is there on the website and i'm sure uh, people can uh, gain free access to the same now when i look back uh, at the journey that i've had till date a few things that stand out is in my role at ashok leyland uh, you know one of my kras was to have individual development plans uh, built for core talent in other words that was a derivative of uh, building succession plans for the function right i mean it is not enough to you know just say that you are the cae but how are you also developing your uh, future leaders in the internal audit space or even leaders who can transition to other roles not necessarily within the same function but i think a good starting point would be to build leaders within the function so for that uh, a succession planning to be effective you need to definitely have the competency framework mapped out and then assess where are the gaps vis-a-vis the current role uh, the competencies that the individual possesses so you do a 360 degree plan you uh, 360 degree effort and then uh, you also get into individual development plans which i have talked about as uh, you know one other role which i really enjoyed is mentoring the team right so when we mentor the team they also uh, learn from the experiences that uh, we bring to the table uh, you know over a period of uh, uh, you know all the gray hairs or loss of hairs have been largely due to the experience that uh, we have carried with us so how do we mentor them in the right uh, sense of the term and uh, you know uh, give them opportunities to participate in multiple projects you know internal auditors cannot be desk auditors internal auditors cannot be only doing internal audit work how do we give them exposure to understanding the business better and uh, gain business acumen right so one of the things that i uh, you know i'm pr- pretty proud about is the fact that you know at uh, ashok lehn there has been a lot of opportunity and flexibility given to the internal audit function and more so uh, you know to the team that has been there uh, to work on multiple cross functional projects uh, as an example i can talk about is that you know uh, as a part, since i handled a dual role in terms of also leading the risk management function there have been opportunities where we had to do operational risk assessment for uh, certain business uh, initiatives and uh, in that uh, space even internal auditors were you know uh, i had delegated some of the engineers who were part of my team to do undertake such operational risk assessment because it also gave them a perspective on uh, erm it also gave them a perspective of translating their experience into something which the business can take uh, uh, value out of the a uh, third thing is also participation at uh, senior leadership meetings including the board meetings right so uh, i did ensure that my uh, direct report is got an opportunity to participate in the audit committee and the risk committee meetings so that they also understand what perspectives the board typically has or you know what are the perspectives that uh, uh, they, they, uh, the the uh, you know the board will typically ask in in a meeting which they can carry forward and you know ensure that in the subsequent meetings they at least have a sense of how to prepare for the uh uh interactions with the board or uh, at the risk committee or audit committee level uh one other standing uh, you know uh, stand out uh, uh you know uh, initiative which uh, i'm pretty proud of is the fact that we also created something known as the audit and risk academy uh this is uh, titled as aura and uh, this is an initiative uh, under the uh, overall ashok leland uh, learning academy which uh, where we uh, invited uh, people from business functions to participate in getting an understanding of internal audit and uh, risk management we developed three different modules at the foundation level at an intermediate level and the uh, advanced level now the reason why they were brought onto the table and this is uh, you know it it was a, a, a core initiative 
not only for internal audit but also for you know there were other streams such, such as finance uh, and strategy and all which was uh, built in including information technology but here what had happened was that there was an opportunity given for people from other functions to not only understand the subject but also take the learnings out of that back to their domains so that they appreciate the need for control consciousness and better governance in their respective uh, business function so uh, uh you know this is also an opportunity for them to come into the internal audit function if there was a suitable opportunity for uh, you know a vacancy which was created and somebody wanted to apply it would give them a lever because they have attended the program and so they know internal what internal audit and risk management is all about and then uh, come and uh, you know join the function so we had these uh, uh, ijps which, which is internal job placement programs where if there was an opportunity in ia function people could move into the function so all of this also translated uh, into a very high employee engagement score. And I'm proud of the fact that uh, one of the highest engaged team has been the internal audit uh, function over a period of time. So uh, some of the competencies, therefore, to be successful, and this is purely uh, off the mind recall. Uh, this is not copied from the CBOC, but I'm sure there are many of this, which is uh, 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 resonating with uh, what are the core competencies. To my mind, Critical thinking and business equipment stand uh, uh, stand out. Unless you know the business well, and unless you know uh, how to navigate the key risks that pertain to the business, and uh, you know, you will not be in a position to add value. As an auditor, I think it is the most uh, important aspect is to know the business. So, a lot of time that internal auditors will have to invest is navigate through the business, understand what's happening at the ground level, understand what's happening, uh, what are the business strategies. Incidentally, you know, we were also invited to attend the uh, annual corporate planning session. So that also gave a perspective to say, where is the business uh, moving towards? What is the business plan for the next two years, five years horizon? And uh, all of these uh, help us in also uh, uh, putting the right uh, focus in, uh, in the right uh, domains. Uh, for uh, appropriate, uh, you know, whether it's a risk assessment or internal audit efforts. Last but not the least is, of course, internal auditors have to be tech savvy, right? I mean, you can't have a situation where you have a process auditor or, uh, uh, you know, IT auditor. Those days are long gone. I mean, today, and uh, you know, even if it's a chartered accountant or an MBA in finance, he or she is expected to know how the technology environment operates, whether it's general controls, at least have a sense of uh, understanding as to where are the key risks as you navigate the, uh, uh, you know, the transactions in the ERP environment or otherwise. And then call out the right risk, whether it's segregation of duties or even perform extensive data analytics. And I'm sure, uh, Deepji, you will resonate with the fact that uh, data analytics is core for, uh, you know, in a transaction intensive environment, even otherwise, anywhere where there's an ERP, those days of, uh, you know, manual records are all long gone. I think uh, uh, internal auditors will have to be savvy to analyze data. And, uh, uh, you know, honestly speaking, even I'm trying to get a handle on how Python works or how, uh, you know, SQL works. In fact, this is something I'm trying to learn. I, I'm not sure how successful I will be, but there is an aspiration to do something in this uh, domain. Influencing skills. Uh, I think uh, we don't have to uh, say anything much on this uh, without uh, uh, being an able influencer. You will not be able to drive their respective actions that you want to drive from uh, the uh, audits that uh, are being done. So we've covered the P uh, of the people. Now let's look at the P of the process, right? Uh, now, to, again, this has been broken into two parts, which is what do you mean by adding value? As I said, you know, the in the definition, the prime, if internal audit has to add value, how do we add value? The function actually adds value when it provides relevant assurance and contributes to the overall effectiveness of the risk management and the control processes, including governance. Uh, now, where can we add value? So that, there are two parts here. So if we took, uh, take assurance into uh, account, uh, the, as you know, assurance activity is typically three parties that are involved. One will be the uh, stakeholder or the process owner who owns the process. The second is, of course, the internal audit function that is performing the assurance. Uh, but the largest stakeholder here is the board, right, which uh, looks at uh, the outcomes of the internal audit efforts. Now, here it was independent and uh, therefore it is to provide an assessment on the state of affairs of governance and risk management and the control processes. Having said that, most of the work today, if you were to look at a startup environment, is largely in terms of advisory or consulting because 
they have not reached a state of maturity where you can provide assurance because the design is still evolving. So how do internal auditors add value there? So here you work as a consultant, right? So there are two parties involved where the nature and scope of the work is already agreed with, between the, the stakeholder and uh, which helps the stakeholders processes to be much made much more efficient and robust. And I think uh, a lot of work that we do, uh, whether it's Ola or even otherwise, where companies have formed uh, newer uh, emerging businesses, uh, you would expect that the internal auditor looks at uh, building design or working with the stakeholder to build the design, looking at the right areas where uh, uh, certain governance elements such as the delegation of powers or uh, other uh, policies and procedures are built in. Now, one of the things that uh, I'm currently working on is building the code of conduct and the whistleblower policy uh, in my current organization. And I think it is imperative that uh, internal auditors also support uh, the, the overall uh, uh, control environment right? And it is not enough to just put the English in place. How do we translate that into building an effective uh, framework? Uh, if I were to talk about the code of conduct, it will be largely how are we building the training content? How are we ensuring that the employees are actually going to understand the content of the code? Because they will not be able to spare their time to read, you know, a 30, 40 page document on the code. There could be a multitude of things. So how do you concise that? How do you build the right uh, interactive training, uh, online training uh, modules? Maybe working with external parties, not necessarily that it has to be done in-house, right? And then the nuances of how whistleblower complaints will have to be handled. So how do you build a ticketing system? What should go into the uh, ticketing system? And how are you building an ethics framework to ensure that there is a committee which reviews the ticketing system? Now, it is not that internal auditors uh, should only do investigations. They can help build the framework in place, right? So... To my mind, I think people actually see you as a uh, trusted advisor. It's, you know, these are not English words alone. Uh, only if you are able to proactively add value to the business. And uh, I must uh, admit that, you know, I had many opportunities even in my earlier organization. One of the things that I'm pretty passionate about was the fact that, uh, uh, you know, my MD, uh, gave me an opportunity to work on building the ESG framework for Ashok Leland, which was a uh, you know very uh, enlightening affair, and I think it was well received as well. Uh, in terms of value addition by uh, internal audit, I think I spoke to you about all of this, so I'll uh, skip the slide. But assurance: what do stakeholders want? I think they want to look at uh, how are the risks uh, getting mitigated, specifically from a reduction of residual risk post the audit. And if there are cost saving opportunities, fundamentally, it's not a mandate for internal audit to look at uh, cost savings. Cost savings could be a, an outcome of the work that you do. But if you do have cost saving opportunities, call that out. And I think it, it would be worthwhile for the leadership as also the board to know how internal audit has added value. Uh, so let me move ahead because I've covered the uh, second part. Now, if I have to look at expectations uh, from internal audit, you know, the core thing to learn here is that internal auditors are not supermen, but and it's we are close enough to being supermen actually, right? So because there is an expectation that is much beyond the ordinary model, right? Okay. So moving forward we need to know who are our stakeholders in the system. And I would focus on the first four, uh, the, uh, the latter two, I will not spend that much time. But typically uh, for a public listed company, the audit committee of the board uh, and the chairman of the board would be primary stakeholders. Of course, the senior leadership at the managing director, the CFO uh, and the COOs uh, would be the uh, uh, next set of executive management who will be the key stakeholders. And of course, then there are the business heads and process owners uh, who are down the layer. Uh, because a lot of time that we spend in the system is largely engaging with these uh, stakeholders, right? But then there are also external stakeholders uh, who are the independent auditors and regulators. The interactions with the regulators, perhaps not so frequent, but with external auditors, at least for the listed company, it does happen much more frequently. Now, if you have to look at stakeholder expectations, and I will just uh, focus on a few KPIs. I think primary needs are that, uh, are that the board will want an uh, assurance which covers that the you know, risks are ma being managed uh, effectively. So possible KPIs could be the fact that audit coverage is fairly robust and uh, there are, you know, the, all the open issues are, uh, you know, quantified or at least uh, there is a close watch on the open issues and it is getting mitigated. So how is internal audit facilitating the mitigation of the uh, audit plans, uh, I mean, the audit findings and uh, cost savings, as I said, while it may not be a key metric as such, there is a larger focus today uh, for many companies to say that, you know, how can I manage my costs better? 
And uh, so uh, the, there may be an inherent expectation that internal auditors will have to be looking more, much more minutely at uh, cost saving opportunities if there is a need, right? Uh, from an executive uh, management point of view, I think uh, they also would like to have issues uh, resolved. And if there are any fraud risks, the same are mitigated. And of course, they also want much more quick turnaround time for audit reports. It's not that audit report, I mean, any audit effort would take about uh, four weeks to eight weeks for closure. How do we crunch that? I mean, how do we make sure that the, the quick action reports are delivered and uh, the results are there for all to see? So, so <clears throat> on the from a line management point of view, of course, it is to make sure that uh, the recommendations are all implemented and uh, uh, the internal auditors know what they are actually auditing. So there are multiple expectations and these translate into different uh, key performance indicators across uh, levels. From the statutory auditor's point of view, it is only from a CARO point uh, to see whether the internal audit system is commensurate with the size and nature of the business and uh, whether the issues are being uh, uh, remediated. And of course, uh, given that uh, there is a larger focus on the uh, uh, you know the internal audit system, I think uh, one will have to look at how effective is the overall internal audit process in terms of uh, not only the process of execution, but also staffing, the technology tools adopted, et cetera. Now, how do we measure the value? I think the core thing to, I mean, these are some of the questions that one will have to ask. Uh, how are we measuring value and how much uh, of the risk is actually getting uh, covered? What is the role of uh, internal audit? I mean, in different industries or different uh, maturity of uh, the organization, uh, I think internal auditor's role will vary. For a, a young uh, organization, which is in a startup mode, I don't think uh, internal auditors are expected to uh, you know, just report on the issues. Internal auditors will also have to, they'll also be called upon to help the organization man, uh, mitigate the uh, you know, risk. Uh, then uh, the main thing is, is the internal audit plan aligned with the overall goals of the organization, right? So you can't have a plan which is looking northward or rather southward where the business is looking northward, right? So it has to be in sync with the overall business objectives. And as I said in the beginning, uh, it has to align itself with the strategic plan. So one of the th things that uh, we always did was, uh, uh, you know, when we prepared our strategic uh, blueprint for the function, we had a vision and a vision carved out for the internal audit uh, function at Ashok Leland. And that was largely in uh, synchronized or uh, you know uh, with uh, the business uh, vision so uh, this was uh, uh, you know uh, accepted at the board level because you know we ensured that if we have to be agile and truly adding value it has to really resonate with the overall company vision as well so the saying is that uh, what uh, gets measured of course gets done so if you can't measure it it doesn't get done right so some of the metrics that we adopt is of course uh, looking at uh, the balance scorecard and therefore you know looking at how are we effective and uh, you know there is a publication of the IIA which talks which has brought out a balance scorecard for the internal audit function. This is of course linked to the uh, functional vision and uh, therefore it drives uh, the internal audit efforts. As I said uh, sometime back, the key performance indicators and the overall attributes, I think uh, for us, the key attributes that we built into the key KPIs were with respect to internal audit delivery, which had a 40% uh, weightage. Uh, and this is, of course, an illustrative uh, example. Uh, it could vary depending on uh, different uh, industries or organizations. Uh, the effectiveness of internal audit, which is largely to say how many uh, uh, audits have got completed, what are the number of issues that are open, etc. And of course, the functional capabilities in terms of people, uh, looking at attrition, looking at the number of training hours, and so on and so forth. And of course, last but not the least, we also did uh, benchmarking so that uh, uh, you know we measure and monitor our outcomes vis-a-vis -vis some of our peers in the system. So if I have to give a bit of explosion around some of these things, I think, uh, you know, benchmarking will drive the process maturity, uh, which covers also the cycle time and the, uh, of the audit report, which uh, from uh, effectiveness of the audit, it is how do you drive uh, mitigation of the major risk? Uh, what are the number of times that you meet up with the audit committee or what are the number of times you provide updates to the leadership team? Right, uh, and how do you ensure adherence to the budget, etc.? Because budgets are always typically very scarce commodity to live uh, get, right? So how do you ensure that you have still delivered despite having very meager budget, right? And uh, from a people point of view, as I said, uh, training, uh, turnover of personnel, and uh, how do we also ensure people move into other functions so that we give them a growth path uh, or pathway into other uh, 
uh, line uh, functions. We also present uh, a SWOT analysis uh, or a rare view mirror to the uh, audit committee. This we should do once a year, where we talk about what worked well, what didn't work well, and uh, how are we addressing the challenges? What were the different uh, consulting or advisory engagements we took up? Because, you know, audit cannot be just seen always in the light of uh, assurance. So we will have to, you know, present or, uh, you know, showcase all the work that has been done in a way that audit committee or the board and it's also the leadership team appreciates the contribution made by internal audit to the organization. And this is probably one of those opportunities where you can uh, do a bit of uh, self-marketing, as I would uh, call it, right? Uh, we also present some of the insights coming out of the internal audit coverage across uh, domains and then uh, uh, moving forward, cost-saving opportunities are quantified and uh, presented. SWOT analysis is important. How do you reflect on where your key strengths are? How do you reflect on where the opportunities or threats lie? And how do you uh, uh, reflect on what are the areas of improvement? So these, this has to be a self-introspection coming in from the CAE and uh, also, you know, so the CAE has to have the big picture and also be able to understand what needs to be done for post correction and accordingly tailor or, uh, you know, calibrate the business, uh, the internal audit uh, functional um, uh, charter and uh, the strategic blueprint will also have to be, uh, you know, while we may have a strategic blueprint, how are we ensuring that the mission of attaining the strategic uh, vision is also calibrated in light of these uh, SWOT analysis. So that's a critical uh, aspect to be done at least once a year. So uh, depending on how much uh, time we have, uh, if I may be just given under 10 minutes to close this. Uh, so please, please, Venkat, all yours. All right, thank you. Uh, I just didn't want to overrun the... Uh, no, no, please, schedule. Venkat, it is all very good for the participants, please. All right, thank you. So uh, we have spoken about this, and I, I think uh, interlocutors will have to prepare themselves to take on new challenges. It is not enough to look at a purchase to pay cycle. It's not enough to look at an order to cash cycle. There could be multitude of risks which are on the horizon. How do we prepare the organization to manage those risks? Right. So a small example. I said I spoke to you about ESG. ESG is something that uh, you know was being talked about about eighteen months ago. Slowly, it became a ground reality for companies to really work on. Now. It, there is no harm if an internal audit function picks up the baton and uh, you know articulates what needs to be done and articulates the risk that the company carries and what is the governance mechanism that we have today and build on it and at least uh, then uh, you know uh, enable the management to take it forward. The another thing could be enterprise risk management. While internal auditors typically there are the companies uh, which have IA and RM uh, go hand in hand. But there are also those companies where risk management is a separate, uh, 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 you know, charter vested with uh, maybe a CFO or, a, uh, you know, separate uh, CRO uh, function is established. But how does internal audit uh, facilitate ERM in a, in a nascent organization, right? So uh, it need not be necessary for you to be told to drive CRM. You can actually work with the stakeholders to do that. Uh, we spoke about the fact uh, that, uh, you know, a learning academy was built. And ultimately, you know, audit plans also may not be carved in stone. They have to be nimble to, to be calibrated from time to time, depending on the changes to the business risk landscape. Uh, you know, again, uh, it, it, it's not that only stable companies need to have a structured audit plan, uh, which can't be changed. They can change the audit plan even for stable organizations if the risk landscape has totally undergone a change, uh, you know, depending on the dynamic nature of the business. So does a one size fit all? Uh, I think uh, the answer while being a no, I just wanted to tell you that in a retail business, you will have a combination of operational audits. And I'm sure Satish can resonate uh, with this uh, because he has been part of the retail business earlier. And it will be extremely data intensive and therefore leveraging data analytics is very critical for a retail business. But operational audits was something that uh, we used to do in Aditya Birla retail. And, uh, uh, you know, the process risk assurance was uh, over and above the operational audits. In uh, manufacturing uh, business, which are slightly more stable and brick and mortar companies, I would say the entire gamut of business operations, including the manufacturing technology, uh, whether it is uh, the uh, right from production planning and control to understanding industry 4.0, if you are in a connected world today, I think it's important for internal auditors to understand the risk and call it out and perhaps undertake structured assurance reviews around the same. For e-commerce companies similar to retail, I would say extremely transaction intensive and audits will have to be calibrated 
constantly to reflect uh, the changing risk landscape. And uh, depending on the business maturity, the internal audit approach will have to be tailored uh, uh, from time to time uh, or customized, I should say. Uh, as I said in the beginning, we'll have to focus on the design and then get into risk assurance. So coming back to the statement, a one size fits all approach does not work. If auditors, if chief audit executives move from a business uh, sector to business sector, right? Typically in various conglomerates where there are a multitude of businesses, you can't have a one size fits all. You will have to really uh, tailor your audit uh, plan in a way that uh, it needs, uh, meets the uh, requirement of that uh, particular business. Moving to the last part, I think this is the technology bit. I would say that, uh, you know, we can't uh, shy away from the fact that the uh, expectations have gone up the roof. The, the complexities of the businesses have undergone a significant shift and uh, cybersecurity uh, is on the top of uh, everyone's mind. Uh, I, I spoke about uh, uh, Industry 4.0, uh, you know, in an auto sector, connected vehicles or, uh, you know, electric vehicles are the name of the game today. And I would say that, uh, you know, internal auditors will have to understand the technology, underlying technology, even if they are not subject matter experts, they will have to understand where are the risks and accordingly perform their assurance uh, reviews accordingly, right? So we will have to work towards supporting the leadership agenda. You can't uh, do your own stuff for the sake of doing internal audit, but I think uh, you will have to, it's not, you know, internal audit is not just being done for CARO. It has to really support the business uh, requirements and uh, the uh, agenda of uh, whether it's a promoter driven organization or even, uh, you know, professionally managed organization, the leadership agenda has to be taken into account and assist in the risk assessment and overall, uh, you know, the horizons of internal audit will have to be expanded to cover, you know, data driven audits. Uh, and uh, support even in strategic initiatives and planning. Uh, what I wanted to leave here is that, uh, you know, a lot of uh, the work that we do uh, is not really straight jacketed. Uh, I think uh, these days, even culture audits are initiated by internal audit, but one will have to really have a bent of mind to understand what is the expectation and uh, build the capabilities to, uh, you know, drive uh, culture audits as well. It need not be in-house all the time, but at least, have the right insights to know what has to be done and then work with, uh, you know, specialists in this uh, domain. So if the primary role is value preservation and value creation, uh, I would say value preservation typically will be in the standard domain, such as procurement, IT, HR, compliance, uh, you know, revenue, all of that. And value creation will come only when you take up newer uh, uh, areas or newer domains, such as enterprises management or even mergers and acquisitions because you call out the risk and you will also call out what needs to be done to manage uh, the risks in a better way. I think the future of audit, internal audit has already arrived. I think uh, today's auditors will, will have to grapple with a host of things and understand the technology architecture. In addition to understanding the uh, technology ar architecture, uh, they will have to get, in, uh, get into newer ways of auditing. I mean, you know, the buzzword that I have been uh, uh, hearing mostly in the in the last uh, 18 months is agile internal audit. So we actually had one of the big four talk to us about how do we build agile internal audit, uh, you know, in a, in a brick and mortar organization. So while the concepts are known, I think it is still an evolving, uh, uh, you know, uh, concept. Uh, not too many companies have embraced it, but it is something which is work in progress. And it is therefore important because you do not have the luxury of time to spend, uh, you know, four to eight weeks on an audit engagement. So using agile techniques, you manage the project better. You ensure that the key risks are called out much earlier and uh, the outcomes of uh, mitigating the risks are met. I think that is what business wants. How do we mitigate the risk and, uh, you know, move forward, right? Uh, we've, we've already covered the need to uh, undertake structured data analytics. I think... Uh, the days of uh, Excel driven analytics have gone. I think uh, SQL, Python, uh, you know, whether it is uh, R, presenting in Tableau, all of that is, uh, I think, uh, the way forward if it is already not established. So I'm sure most companies have already on this, but I would strongly encourage that internal audit team be equipped with a couple of data analysts who are specialists in, in those respective uh, languages. And uh, today in uh, ANI, we are actually building a data analytics vertical, which will support not internal audit as such, but which will support the business from understanding the financial implications of uh, such uh, 
uh, you know, uh, 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 of the transactions and do a slice and dice across multiple, uh, you know, algorithms that need to be built and provide insights coming out of that. So it is not just a lever for internal audit, but it's also a lever for appropriate decision making, right? So this is something that we're working on. So uh, we have covered this in one way or the other. I will just uh, skip this. But uh, key thing for me is, if you have to be seen as a partner in progress or business advisor, I think all doing whatever it takes to really bring value to the table and calling that value out, uh, even supporting the business meet its end objectives is when you actually become a trusted advisor. Otherwise, you will not have a seat at the table. So this is my, uh, my own experience, uh, which I've had in the prior organization, that uh, if you have to be given a seat at the table, you have to really be seen to be adding value and asking the right questions. You need to have those business uh, insights. The days there are no desktop based audits. Of course, desktop audits happened during the COVID phase, but I think internal auditors will have to develop the keen sense of smell to really understand where the risks are and go about understanding what are the root causes and work towards uh, working with the business to uh, manage the root causes or mitigate the uh, root causes with the right preventive and corrective action plans. There are companies where uh, we also get uh, uh, subject matter experts from other uh, domains, but uh, so far such experiments have not yielded uh, uh, very fruitful results, but I'm sure it is something that most companies are also considering given the shortage of talent in today's uh, market. So uh, long and short of it, internal lotters will have to learn how to dance. They have to be agile in the true sense of the term, right? So I, uh, you know, there was a book by Larry Holmes of IBM who says elephants can't dance. And I do believe that, you know, if we have to really be successful, we will have to shed our flap and really learn how to dance, even though we may be elephants. So those are some of my remarks. And of course, from a closing uh, remarks point of view, I would say, that uh, you know, this is we have to move away from postmodern to becoming a true value advisor through moving away from business insights to foresights. Right? I'll leave it at this because this is all English. Yeah. So I end my presentation here. Thank you, Venkat. So uh, can I can I stop sharing? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, better. Yeah. So yes. TBB, what a rundown of uh, the entire audit space. I think you, uh, we, we should have kept, I think, two hours presentation for this <laughs> because you had so much to say given your experience and that's uh, coming out very clearly of your passion for internal auditing. Uh, out of the many things that you said, and I'll make a humble attempt to some way uh, try to summarize it at the end. But one of the things that really came out uh, in your presentation, which I found unique, was that you uh, had engineers in your team. So can you tell us a little more about this? Can you elaborate a little more on this? And what's been your experience of having engineers in the team? Because I also had some experience of having engineers. And uh, all of us would be very keen because this is something which is very unique. And uh, this is the way forward, as you said, you know, that uh, future future uh, future ready future focus so what's the what's your take on on having engineers in the team i think engineers bring a lot of value because uh, uh, you know in a, in a manufacturing environment and of course it's not to say that in a, in a technology environment you will not have engineers you will have systems engineers or software engineers who can work with you we will not talk about them at this point in time uh, but in a manufacturing environment uh, because a large part of it is operations uh, driven how do you ensure that the right focus on quality or reliability of the uh, production is uh, there? How do you ensure that the, uh, uh, you know, the overall production planning and control effectiveness is in line with, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the requirements of the, the capabilities of uh, that particular manufacturing location, right? And uh, where, where can we build in efficiencies and reduce wastages, right? Uh, so energy consumption is an area where, uh, in, you know, engineers can really look at uh, where, where is my energy consumption highest and what are the ways to arrest uh, uh, wastages, right? So I think there are a whole host of areas. Uh, it need not necessarily be always uh, production centric. It could be energy. It could be environment, health and safety, because, you know, when you look at safety parameters, uh, how do you bring in, uh, you know, an engineer will be better equipped to see whether the manufacturing practices adhere to the right safety standards or not. And so engineers... Uh, you can have a combination of, uh, you know, mechanical, 
you can have a combination of mechanical uh, civil uh, electrical depending on you know what kind of focus areas you want to bring to the table but doesn't matter they can be molded to look at the right areas and they have a flair uh, you know uh, of the business acumen right i mean they have a flair for bringing the right insights they may not be very articulate in terms of writing a very structured report but that's okay i think that's where we come into the picture and help them you know carve out the right uh, things uh, right venkata i think it's been such a wonderful presentation and you have a wealth of experience in uh, you are heading ola before i ask you a question i have a small anecdote which i cannot resist to share you know two weeks back i went with my wife you know to a mall and there was a huge queue that mall is just next to my house so uh, usually there's no queue there you know in the parking lot and there's such a big line and i uh, my wife and i were very cu- curious you know why there's such a big line so we just went ahead and saw and we saw that people had queued up to take a ride on ola electric to test yeah. out the ola electric yeah. you know so uh, so present company there was such a big queue for people just waiting to you know try out the ola electric I the, hope you got a chance to drive one. Uh, I, I said I don't want to stand in the queue so long. So, but but it was <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So you know uh, you are in the right company and the company is doing a great job. Uh, I have one question for you. That's on talent acquisition for Intel Audit. One is there's a huge shortage because when we speak, we find there's a huge short, shortage of good staff. You want the elephants to dance, so you want such a lot of competence within the Intel Audit function, and usually there's a small team. you know trying to deliver with superhuman efforts you know such a lot of things which you shared in the slides so on top of that you have also said that you know there are some companies where there is job rotation so you join as a youngster in the team fresh as a professional like hindustan lever or ashok leland where you go through internet and then you are posted to different functions or maybe in asian paints and so on but right. when you talk about getting your team to actually sit with the business and then maybe cross you know uh, cross over to business and business to your team so there is a huge risk where your auditors may just cross over to business and there's always such a you know possibility to get that talent so what's your take on that how does it work i think if you have the big picture that you know we have to be an enabler to the business in one way or the other and i think uh, it's a great uh, opportunity not only to be an ambassador for the uh, uh, you know driving the right uh, governance and the right uh, control uh, culture across the organization internal audit will be a good uh, stepping stone because it also provides a platform to understand the business across multiple uh, uh, facets of the organization whether it's uh, you know um, uh, manufacturing or whether it's sales whether it is because the auditors get an opportunity to cover each of this during their course of their internal audit journey so typically it's a 2 to 3 year stint in internal audit before they move into the line functions of course finance also uh, people move into the finance uh, stream as well so yes uh, talent uh, in today's uh, world is a scarce commodity and uh, uh we all know about uh, the great resignation story which is already there uh but having said that i think uh, you know uh, there are companies which have succeeded by uh bringing in strong internal auditors uh, uh, i mean uh, business people who have had a stint in internal audit and i think it will be a great uh, platform for um, uh, you know to emulate in uh, you know most companies i think if you, have, you know i'm not talking about startups uh, startups also i think it can be experimented over a period of time coming down to your role in uh, ashok leyland where you headed internal audit and risk management what has been your experience uh, for heading both the functions i think it's a great uh, lever because you know while internal audit looks at operational risks uh, and a slightly more uh, granular level uh, the helicopter view is with the risk management function because you look at strategic risks you are not of course you need to know the business uh, landscape you need to know the ecosystem and the strategic risks uh, and the operational risk uh, are tied in the erm is slightly more elevated in nature uh, and uh, it is not about compliance let me also make that point very clear that erm in al was not about driving this from for meeting the compliance under sebi it was more about actually adding value to the business uh, by asking probing questions which actually got baked into the corporate uh, plan uh, so th- these were uh, healthy interactions at the leadership leadership level every quarter and uh, more so we also had uh, risk insights which were published uh because the team spent a lot of time doing research 
And then, uh, you know, there were two uh, publications that we did. One was a quarterly risk uh, insight uh, document on a particular domain, whether it is cybersecurity or, uh, you know, whether it is the impact of, uh, uh, you know, the uh, metal prices and so on and so forth. There are a multitude of things. But uh, as an annual uh, risk outlook, which actually carved out uh, the various uh, uh, global risks that, can, uh, that are prevailing and uh, based on, uh, you know, the World Economic Forum outlook or any other uh, uh, known uh, source, and then how does it impact Ashok Leland and therefore feeding in, into the corporate plan as such. So I think, yeah, uh, risk management is a, it's a two-way journey. It's not that it's not enough to just go and tell somebody that, you know, these are your risks and how do you mitigate it? I think you need to have uh, engaging conversation with the leadership team uh, in a very informal and, uh, you know, in a periodic way as well. So for, from an internal audit point of view, those risks from a uh, you know, business, uh, 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 from an ERM point, how does it flow into internal audit? So where is the sort of cross-pollination? Given that I've had the dual responsibility, I think this helped because I could also sense that, okay, we need to focus more on some of the areas such as maybe cybersecurity as an example, right? So Gibji, we have time for just one more question very quickly, yeah? Sure, uh, Venkat, uh, since you have spent uh, two decades, you know, in the internal audit function and, you know, being at the top in internal audit, uh, let me ask you, if you look at the future of internal audit, what are the two or three top challenges which the top leadership of internal audit should be taking care of? You know, uh, what are the top two or three challenges which the internal audit function as a whole and the top leadership in internal audit should take care so that re it really remains on top, you know, keeps the flag flying? I think call a spade a spade. Uh, don't uh, shy away from uh, you know uh, calling out a risk or calling out where the uh, the uh, need for improvement in the governance mechanisms are. So uh, you know I'll just take an example here. Uh, when we did certain whistleblower reviews in one of the organization, the uh, outcome of that we did not leave it with the closure in terms of actions to be taken on the uh, wrongdoer. We actually took it forward where the, uh, actually it was the MD who suggested that why don't you communicate to the larger organization to, uh, for the, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, what are the actions being taken and the need for uh, ensuring that we live with the, live by the values of the organization. So I think um, internal auditors calling a spade a spade and uh, communicating effectively, these are two things. Of course, all of the things are equally important uh, in terms of knowing the business um, uh, you can't just uh, do a desktop, uh, I mean, uh, you know, desk-based job. One will have to engage with all stakeholders uh, and understand where are the, where is the business pulse, right? Understand the numbers, understand the, the uh, key drivers and the key metrics, and then, uh, you know, uh, calibrate the internal audit plan uh, based on uh, the uh, key metrics as well. So I think, yeah, uh, long and short of it, uh, there is no one size fits all. I think uh, you will have to keep at it all the time. Sure. What an exhilarating session it was, uh, TVV. I think uh, we would uh, definitely, as I said earlier, we would want it to go on and on. But then uh, you also have a constraint of time. You need to get into another meeting as well. We had also decided that it will be a 45-minute uh, kind of a episode. But TVV, uh, really, you have so much to share. I particularly would like to call out a couple of things that you that you uh, said so nicely and clearly in your presentation. You talked about individual talent plans. I think uh, very few people I've heard who, when they talk about internal auditing, talk about in individual talent plans. You spoke about future leaders and future focus. So a lot of your presentation was definitely based on the future, which is, which is nice. Mentoring teams, you know, that is another aspect that sometimes we get, uh, it gets tends, tends to get a little neglected. And your aspect of getting senior team managers into the uh, audit uh, committee and board presentations was uh, something very good. You maintained your aura very well by talking about the, uh, the audit and risk academy, which, which was started. Uh, I'm definitely personally very keen to know more about this, which we can do it, of course, on offline. Your audit uh, department's participation in business plans is something else that I personally took away. At your age and seniority, you're yet talking about learning Python, learning SQ, uh, SQL. And uh, sometimes these words I'm myself not able to pronounce, but you are having that 
uh, what can I say that that urge to kind of learn this this is something which uh, has been great. In Ola, you said that you are participating in the code of conduct, you have the whistle blowing policies. And one thing that you said really touched me internally was it's not just about putting the English in place. It's something far beyond that. And I think in any document, any plan that internal auditors or for that, for that matter, the company makes, it's not just about English. You know, we can always stitch up English by cutting and pasting. Microsoft has given us this ability, but it is far beyond words. And it's this particular aspect. I think I was, I was very thrilled to to hear about and uh, be more preventive rather than being reactive that's the other part that i that i particularly liked about the esg framework which you said uh, you uh, you you know uh, lent a lot of shoulder to and your right tools adding value alignment these were some of the words which i uh, really picked up as a, a, a principle rear view mirror you know keep looking at it uh, calling out what did not work as well. I think it will require a lot of guts and a lot of courage and a lot of conviction to get into these kind of things. SWOT analysis, one size doesn't fit all. The changing role of internal auditing like corporate governance, cyber fraud, few things that I... Culture, you spoke about audit of culture and this is, you know, you admittedly said that, you know, there's some work that needs to be done, which is very true. And one other aspect, I, the other aspect was value creation versus value preservation. I think the distinction between uh, those two, future has already arrived. We have to be partners in progress. Uh, in one slide, you said you showed a cup and said that, you know, I'm not a superman, but I will bring out a shield and I'll request Sama audit systems to do this. Bring out a shield and say that Dipji and Satish are not Superman, but TVV is. And I, that, way, <laughs> that way I will say, I would like to conclude. And uh, so the last lesson that I got, it's of course now close to eight and, uh, you know, TVV has to step in into another meeting. I won't hold him back. Yes, internal auditors. Who says internal auditors can't dance? Internal auditors, so long as the profession has people like TVV in the profession, internal auditors will not make others dance, but will can definitely dance, which means we'll be nimble, fo nimble footed. We'll think about the future. And that's the takeaway uh, TVV for us. It's been a wonderful session. It's nice that you spared time for us. Um, so Sama is grateful to you. Personally, Dipji and I are personally very grateful to, for you to spend your time. You gave us more than 45 minutes, which is a bonus for us. And uh, Dipji, you always have the last word. So you, now, before I, Deepji, I, I, I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that this has been a wonderful opportunity for me to showcase in a small way what uh, you know has been done. And I really appreciate your time in this uh, and you know your vision to do this sort of a series. I really appreciate that. Uh, uh, you know, please keep up the flag highing for uh, you know the flag flying high for uh, internal audit. Uh, the last point I wanted to say is that internal audit cannot be successful if you do not have an enabling environment. And that is very critical. So if you do not have an enabling environment, the audit cannot be successful. I think I have been extremely fortunate to have very enabling environments in the organizations I have worked. And uh, uh, the proof of that is what has been reflected in the outcome. Thank you very much, Venkat. And the last sentence which I want to say is that with your passion for nature photography and carnatic music, I think Python and SQL are just a cakewalk for you. So, you know, uh, because your right side and left side brain, both are functioning absolutely fine. So, you know, with, <laughs> with this passion, you know, that will be a song for you. You said whether you'll be able to uh, learn Python, it'll be a cakewalk for you. So, I think... With your good you wishes. With your good wishes. Thank you once again. Always. Thank you very much, Venkat. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye.